Hello, everyone. This is Brad Thomas, and welcome back to the Ground Up podcast. Uh, it's late in the day, but we're uh, really pleased to have uh, Gordon Dugan. Gordon Dugan. Sorry, Gordon is the uh, uh, chairman of one of the REITs we're going to be touching on today, uh, which is a new company to our coverage spectrum called New Lake Capital Partners. Uh, that ticker symbol is uh, NLCP. And of course, I uh, know Gordon from going way back to WP Carey, another company that we cover and also own as well. Uh, and then there's another company that uh, Gordon is involved in called Indus. And Indus, we're not going to be uh, talking about that as much today, but Gordon is uh, heavily involved in that uh, industrial REIT as well. So Gordon, it's good to see you today. Brad, great to see you as well. Long, long week, and I see you're, you're working Friday night. So um, I hope all your, all your uh, listeners and, and investors that follow you know that you, you spend your Friday afternoons working or uh, Friday evenings working, not, you know, not, not uh, goofing off. Well, you know, real estate's a 24 seven job, but of course our dividends uh, help us work at night. They work out night for us when I'm sleeping well at night. <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, that's what the dividends are all about. But, but Gordon, yep. um, we could touch on uh, since we introduced coverage on New Lake, there's been a lot of our subscribers and followers have asked some questions and I wanted to touch on really two of the most, uh, I guess, uh, frequently asked questions is regarding the fact that you're listed over the counter. Um, yes. You have some of the uh, some of your peers are, are, are New York Stock Exchange. And so, you know, obviously that uh, liquidity is a big important part of this uh uh, operation here. And so, you know, we would like to own a lot of shares in this in this company, but but a little bit restrictive with over the counter. So can you kind of touch on that for us a little bit and kind of walk us through that? Sure. And and let me just let me just start by saying um, two things about how, you know, when you think about New Lake, and I'll talk about the OTC listing because it's it 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 um it's something that a lot of investors do want to talk about. So you're absolutely right. But I also think when people think of New Lake, the, the two things that should come to mind, we are by far the second largest player in the cannabis REIT world. We have a market cap of uh, right around $700 million. No one's close to us. Uh, IIPR obviously is way out in front, number one, but we're way out in front, number two. So we're the second biggest no one else is as big as we are other than IIPR. So that, that's, that's one thing. Second thing I'd like to say, we're the only REIT in the cannabis space that's had 100% rent collection or 100% collection of monies owed. The only one. No one else has done it. We're it. And that's a testament to the quality of our portfolio. But because we actually own the real estate, which most people would rather own real estate than lend on real estate. Um, the the, the uh, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ have taken the position that owners of real estate listed, that's leased to cannabis companies cannot be listed on the New York Stock Exchange or the, the NASDAQ. I'm not sure why they allow IIPR to be listed. I, I think it's, it's, it's wrong, no, no two ways about it. But, but they do, and it, they, they grandfathered it because it snuck in uh, a few years ago under uh, the coal memo. But, I, but, I, but I, don't, I don't understand why they do exactly what we do. Arguably, we do it better, and they can be listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and we can't. The, the good news is the OTC is a, is a surprisingly uh, good exchange relative to at least what I expected going in. All of the, the large uh, foreign issuers that have ADRs, are listed on the OTC. Companies like Tencent, which is one of the largest tech companies in the world, you want to trade it in the United States. You're not trading it on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. You're trading it on the OTC tier one system, which is where we trade. Uh, similarly, community banks are all listed on the OTC. These are, you know, large, in many cases, large, well-run, you know, right down the middle of the, the plate companies that are listed on the OTC. So we're, we're in pretty good company there. I, I would also say that historically there's better liquidity on the NASDAQ and the NYSE. There's other certain advantages. And so I, I think there's a reason why the mortgage REITs have come up with very convoluted ways to list on the major exchanges. Um, but I don't, I don't understand a mortgage REIT that, can, that can't foreclose on the real estate. 
So if you make a loan to a real estate borrower and they can't repay you, by charter, the mortgage REITs are incapable of foreclosing, which is a, it's got to be some sort of structural disadvantage in that. So there, there are pros and cons to, to all of it. I'd rather be listed on the OTC and own the real estate than be listed on the NASDAQ um, um, and, and have just plain vanilla mortgages. I think, I mean, that's, yeah. I, I may change my mind on that, but that, that's where yeah. we are today. And, yeah. and, and it does a lot of, you know, a lot of investors question it, but we've had pretty good volume in the stock. Um, and, 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 you know, we hope to continue to grow the business and get more volume. Yeah. So really only restrictive. I mean, obviously that legislation is the only thing that's in, in, in inhibiting you to list on a major exchange. Correct. Yes. I mean, if, if that's yeah. correct. Okay. And yeah. we, and, so, and we think there's a very good chance that there's a bipartisan um, move to solve that issue prior to the midterm elections next year. We think that um, the, 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 the capital, th that the, the lawmakers in Congress will find a way uh, to clarify the federal position with respect to banking, with respect to capital markets, and then we'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to apply, it's less than a year away, we'll be able to, to uplist if we cho choose to do so in less than a year onto the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, if it happens. No guarantee it happens, obviously, but a lot of people believe there's gonna be a bipartisan support for new legislation to clarify this so that banks can take deposits, people can list companies that are doing things that are 100% legal in the jurisdictions that they're taking place. Yeah, even in my home state of South Carolina, uh, one of my friends who's a congressman here, uh, Nancy Mace just introduced a bill recently, um, you know, obviously she's a Republican and we're starting to see that, you know, I think uh, that, like you said, kind of those two parties come together. So I agree. I think it's going to happen. It's, it's not a matter of, of if it's just when. That's right. And it's one of the few things that there's bipartisan support on. And you, you pointed out something that was very important, her, her involvement in a, in a Republican led bill um, or, or a Republican led bill. Uh, bill that that they've that they put to the house you know that's huge like their name a name I, I can name two issues that that i know of that are that are or three that are bipartisan infrastructure you know the, the bill would not have passed without the republicans voting for it however people might argue about the the details but there's you know bipartisan support for infrastructure criminal justice it was a major bipartisan bill that was passed during the trump administration uh, I happen to be involved with the Innocence Project, as you know. It's a it's a bipartisan issue, and cannabis is the third. There aren't many, and so yeah. I, I do think it's it's a matter of of if of of when, not if. <laughs> it's a matter of when, not if. Excuse me. Yeah. So, Gordon, can we kind of uh, let's drill down if we could to uh, more fundamentals? I was looking through the investor deck here, and I know you've been pretty active with this with this uh, cannabis uh, yes. again equity REIT, not mortgage REIT. Um, and so your, your markets, you've got 27 properties. I'm just referring to the latest deck. You do point out zero rent deferrals or, or vacancy. Um, looks like most of the stars that I see on the map are up in the Northeast, although you do have one planted down here in Florida where I happen to be right now. Um, kind of where do you see expansion? Where is this new capital going to be invested in those target markets? Or are you looking to move into some other markets? And how, how we do, have... Uh, we have a list of target markets, and I, I think the best way to describe our strategy from day one has been limited license states, states where licenses are highly regulated, the um, production and sale of cannabis is highly regulated, an Illinois, a Massachusetts, a Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, New York will be in that category, um, and, and it, it allows the operators to make money which allows the operators to pay their rent. Um, and so, you know, we think that in those states, the licenses act a little bit like a moat around the businesses. They, they have value of their own. Not everyone can just, you can't just like rent a warehouse and start growing cannabis and start selling it. They're very, you know, they're very regulated. Um, and, you know, some of these states still have fairly strict regulations on alcohol sales. In Pennsylvania, you cannot buy alcohol in a grocery store. You, if you want to buy liquor, you have to you have to do it through the state-owned store. This is better than that, 
but it but it's interesting that you know some states have taken a very regulated approach to cannabis that's where we want to be it's more understandable and predictable how um the operators will make money um and and what the com- what the competitive landscape is um florida is going to be a booming market it is a booming market on the medical side already it's 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 continues to be and and overall i think it's just breathtaking. This is going to be over a $30 billion industry by 2025. So it's a very large multi-billion dollar industry growing by 15, you know, 20% a year. Very few industries of that size. I, I can't think of another industry of that size uh, that's growing, you know, that's growing that quickly. Electric cars will be an industry that's, that's, that's similar, but it's in, it's in that category of large industries growing very rapidly. So we like yeah. those limited license states. Yeah, I did see that uh, a deal you just disclosed, you acquired, uh, well, actually, this was looked like in 2020, this Mount DeRay, Florida property. Yeah. Um, you've also got a recent announcement I was just looking at, which is a fairly sized deal, good sized deal for your company. Um, I'm looking here, it was a, uh, about, a, what, a 60 million, was it 60 million? I'm looking for the for the uh, the the, tra- the uh, data, um, but a, you announced a pretty large, I'm 30 million, it was 30 million. 30 million, million yeah. Yeah, that was in uh, that was in. Um, uh, we just announced it last week, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and that was a mortgage deal that's potentially convertible to a equity deal, correct? It's the idea is it's a loan that converts to a sale lease back. There's a okay. possibility we get paid back on the loan, and it doesn't convert. But we only wanted to be involved in a loan if we thought there was a reasonable chance it would it would create a sale lease back opportunity. We're an equity REIT. We want to own the real estate. We want to be protected from inflation by owning the real estate, unlike mortgage lenders who aren't protected. And so we really feel like we want to, we want to own the real estate. So we made a loan and structured it in such a way that it's possible we get paid back, but we have a reasonable likelihood it just it converts into a into a sale lease back, and and that's why we did it that way. We wouldn't make a loan just to make a loan. Yeah, and I'm looking referring to page eight on your investor deck for the company, you know, cap rates, uh, which is always just a compelling part of this, you know, this uh, business model. So again, in this deck, you've got around twelve point four percent cap rate. And again, this deck was dated. Um, yes. I don't know the exact date, so things obviously change, but. But still, are you still seeing that type of cap rate activity? I know you've seen somewhere in the in the you know eleven to fourteen range. Yeah, is that is that holding? Or are you seeing any compression there? We're seeing we're seeing compression as you would expect. It just it it, it we're, we're not going. Two things have happened. One, the the industry's matured, and so some of these companies have become very you know Cureleaf had over three hundred million of revenue last quarter. That's a billion two business growing at a 30% clip, they've become pretty good credits as the industry has started to mature. You have some really good credits here. Um, and so those companies in particular have, have seen nice cap rate compression, meaning they're, they're able to command, you know, something in the nines rather than in the 11s or 12s. But some of the smaller players are still, you know, just like in any industry, you have the better credits and the and the and the smaller credits, and so I think what we said on the earnings call is the range is like nine and a half to twelve, something like that. And and we we said during the IPO we expected an eleven, roughly an eleven percent rate of return on cap rate on the on the on the money. And I think that's true. But but overall, there's you know there's there is some, you know there is some pressure, and it's because the business is performing. You know when businesses are doing well. When you collect 100% of rents, people look around and go, wow, like I want to do that. And let's, let's, you know, cap rates are going to tighten. When businesses are terrible, like, like the mall business, cap rates go the other way. And, and, you know, so, but, but even if they, let's say they compress to 10 or 10 and a half or nine and a half, we just pick a number, you know, as you mentioned, I'm chairman of Indus. We own industrial real estate in markets where the cap rates are three and a quarter, three and a half three and three quarters. And so when you're getting three times that owning an industrial business leased to a cannabis operator, you know, that that's, that's really juicy. That's, that's not going to last. And, and if we're right, that it's, if not when, 
uh, when not if, I gotta have done that twice, Brad. If it's when not if there's legalization, these credits are gonna be upgraded a, 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 just a, a whole nother step. You know, some of these credits are gonna be, you know, I don't know if it's Anheuser-Busch or Coca-Cola or somebody, but big, you know, big multinational consumer facing companies are going to have to jump into the legal cannabis business because it's just too big and too, you know, and growing too much. And so, yeah. you know, we, we could, you know, we could wake up in, in 14, 18, 24 months, pick a time frame, and have a bunch of, you know, single A credits that we did at nine, 10, 11, you know, percent. So I, I think people, people should, should view cap rates compressing slowly as a positive. It means the industry is going well. If we wake up tomorrow and they're all at five, that's bad for our business model. And then that's not going to happen. It, it'll happen yeah. gradually. Well, actually, you gave me a great idea for another article. Uh, and that's, you know, the, that topic of credit upgrade, I think, is extremely relevant. We're seeing that, too, Gordon, with the, the gaming sector with Vici. And we've got a pretty long position in, in Vici. I feel like, you know, those 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 companies, those gaming companies are going to see credit upgrades, just like cannabis, frankly. Yes, and, yes. And that's going to make the uh, those cap rates uh, compress. Brad, so, and I think... Uh, I think if you were to pick one sector to say, what is this cannabis REIT, equity REIT, not the mortgage REITs, the equity REITs, what are they going to be most similar to? It's exactly what you said. It's the, it's the gaming REITs. You know, they were buying casinos at an eight, then a seven, and then a six. And what's Vici done? It, it's, hit, it's hit it out of the park, right? Yeah. Well, so, our, and our good our good friends at Blackstone have been very active. Uh, they've kind of helped to set some of those markets, some of those hurdles for us. And uh, they, as you know, sure some have. of these transactions have been pretty, they, pretty interesting. So I think people should view falling cap rates. If you want to analogize, you know, we're in the early innings. We're like the gaming rates, you know, several years ago. There's all this opportunity. You're still getting very high cap rates. The There's... You know, there's a chance to get really big. Look at look at what IIPR has done. My my hat is off to them. They've done an incredible job, um, and look how big they are. You know, they were that was a tiny REIT for a long time, and you know they they're the you know they're they're the they're the Vici of of cannabis, but we want to be the Vici of cannabis too. And yeah, there's room no, for there's, more there's, than one. There's definitely. When we looked at. I was looking at IAPR yesterday, and you know, you're right. They were their 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 price was basically flatline, and then all of a sudden they just kicked that thing into gear, and then yeah. it just it's been straight up. Now, last question, Gordon. I'll let you go. Is dividend? Uh, now, I did. Yes. I was looking here. Looks like in the four the late you've you've got you announced your latest dividend at 12, 12 cents a share. Yes. Your your last uh, quarter you generated thirty one cents per share in AFFO. So yeah. that that leaves plenty of cushion, which suggests to me, you know, some pretty some pretty robust dividend growth ahead. So how do you how do you uh, what's your opinion on that matter? Yeah, it, it, yes, you, you you hit the nail on the head, Brad. Um, the the to, but to be clear, the last quarter, what we said in the earnings call this morning, David Weinstein, our CEO, and and Anthony Coniglio, our president, talked about. Last quarter was was two stub dividends because we went public during that time. So there was a pre-IPO dividend, post-IPO dividend. They totaled 24 cents um, for the quarter. I, I think that that we we don't have an announcement about you know what what dividend policy is going to be, but I think we're going to take the IIPR model of strong dividends and strong dividend growth, um, and that's going to be a big focus because. One thing, if you look at our company, we still have a lot of money to invest, but the cash flow is awesome. We have no CapEx. We don't do any spec development. We don't own any land. It, th these things are just cash flow machines. And we're going to follow the IIPR playbook of, of having strong dividends and strong dividend growth. And so more to come. But the, the, the intuition that there's going to be str like, you know, strong dividend growth is exactly right. That is, that is our plan. Yeah, I just I just checked the math. I mean, our our AFFO number for IF is about 80, 80s, mid eighties. Um, so uh, that's kind of what we saw for twenty one. And and again, we're seeing with IIPR again uh, thirty eight percent analyst estimates growth for two thousand twenty two on an AFFO basis. So yeah, it's uh, awesome. That's it's awesome. Yeah, it is. It is. 
Well, listen, Gordon, I really appreciate your time. It's been helpful, especially explaining the uh, OTC uh, status and um, all everything else you, you uh, uh, referenced. So thank you again for jumping thank on you. such a late time here on Friday. Thanks, Brad. Now, now I'm going to go have a beer. So I hope all right. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll join you next time. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, Thanks, take everyone. care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye -bye.